13 to order. May we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we take roll. Commissioner Bushy? Here. Commissioner Krizia? Here. Commissioner Perry? Here. Commissioner Rubino? Here. Mayor Castelli? Here. We're all here. Before we start on the agenda, uh, we have a request to uh, add an item 12A to the agenda. Request by Officer Jason Nagy to purchase additional service credit from the MERS Municipal Employees Retirement System. Is there a motion to add that item to the agenda? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Is there support? No support. May we take a vote? Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Krizziak? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes, motion carries. Um, and before we get started, I would ask when we get to uh, Commission Liaison reports that we try to keep them as brief as okay. possible tonight. I, for one, would like to get home to see the President's address at 9 o'clock. Given the agenda, we should have no problem doing that <laughs> if we try to be succinct in our comments. Yeah. Next item is consideration of the following minutes. Regular City Commission meeting held Tuesday, July 9, 2013. Public hearing and zoning Board of Appeals meeting held Tuesday, July 25, 2013. And a special city commission meeting held Tuesday, August 12, 2013. Is there a motion? Your Honor, I move the minutes of the regular city commission meeting held Tuesday, July 9, 2013, and the public hearing and, and zoning Board of Appeals meeting held Tuesday, July 25, 2013, and the special city commission meeting held Tuesday, August 12th, 2013, be approved as recommended. Is there support? Support. Questions, comments, corrections? May we take a vote? Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Krizziak? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes, motion carries. Next item is the monthly disbursement report. Amy? Um, accounts payable and payroll for the months of July and August was provided to all of you prior to the meeting. For July, payroll was $74,431.99, and accounts payable was $3,451,548.35. Of that, $2,912,66.95 were in tax liabilities. And then for August, payroll was $60,776.43, and accounts payable was one million fourteen thousand one hundred thirty eight dollars and fifty three cents of that six hundred fifty two thousand three hundred eighteen dollars and seventeen cents were in tax liabilities and that's the money we collect and disperse to other taxing authorities yes in each it is. case any questions um mr mayor yes, go ahead. on july 11th there was the assessment for the um oh my writing's so messy mm -hmm. the um Give me a page if you would, Ann. I don't know that I can. It's 20. page three, Mayor, in the July report. Okay. Oh. They're in the right hand with corner. With the sewer. Oh, you got it on the pad. Okay. Yeah, sorry. The, um, it was the, so wait, which is it? The Assessing Contract in Cambridge Sewer CCTV, is that what you're talking about? Yes. I just wanted to find out, will that still work for next year? Will that still be valid? And if valid assessment for when Cambridge is completed next year with the sewer work? Oh, I don't even see what you're talking about. The like assessing it. contract, and is the uh, contract that we pay for assessment sewer, uh, services. Yes. Yeah. And then the, the, I think what she might be asking is, will the televising of the sewer still be valid for when the uh, construction is actually done? Is that the question? Yes, thank you. Correct. The assessing contract is it's that's really, separate. Forget it's about the assessing It's a whole separate contract. thing, right? And that that will be valid for the project that'll start next year. Okay. Yes. Great. Yes. Thank yes. You. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Thank uh, you. Other questions? Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, move the July and August disbursement report be approved as listed. Is there support? I'll support. May we take a vote? Commissioner Bushy. Yes. Commissioner Rubino. Yes. Commissioner Krizziak. Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Mayor Costello? Yes, motion carries. Consideration of governmental reports. The county commissioner always gets to go first. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, Gary McGilvery, uh, your county commissioner. Uh, I just want to bring you up to date on a couple issues that have been uh, before us at the county commission. One is our animal control center. Uh, we have several residents who have been attending meetings over the last six to nine months wanting us to switch to a no-kill shelter, um, which is pretty tough to do with a county our size. But we have been meetings one-on-one uh, -on -one with that group as well as with the administration trying to work out some of the bugs that, that are caused, that being feral cats, uh, bully breed dogs, pit bulls, things like that. So once we get everything ironed out, hopefully we can come to some kind of conclusion. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I'm pleased to announce tonight that one of your residents, Martha Schlesinger on Devonshire, will be my appointee to the Senior Advisory Council. So, uh -huh. uh, so. Martha's here. Oh, <laughs> Very good. So that's all I have. Questions? Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for these uh, school districts yeah. next. Good evening. My name is Karen Toomey. I'm from the Ferndale Board of Education. I just wanted to address the commission this evening to give you a few updates. I think Tonight's most appropriate topic to start with is the bond projects. I can tell you firsthand, well, I guess secondhand, I have children in three of the buildings and they have tested the air conditioning in each of them and it's working really well. So I think we can all appreciate that. Another subject near and dear to us here in Pleasant Ridge from the bond is the pools. You should go visit them. They're beautiful, they're reconditioned and ready to go. Um, we are also proud that UHS and Roosevelt now have full service kitchens, as well as our um, auditorium, which is not quite yet finished, but please do join us in just a couple months and see our fine productions and our newly renovated auditorium. I think everybody will appreciate it. And of course, I can't thank the Pleasant Ridge community enough for having supported that. Uh, another thing that we have going on is the DIY festival this weekend. Lots of schools will be involved in that. So you can support either the marching band, which will have a performance on Friday night, and a chili cook-off. Saturday and Sunday, there will be a kids' uh, zone sponsored by the PTAs. And um, a favorite part of that is Dunk Your Own Teachers. I have to tell you, I was very disappointed that um, it turned out they didn't need me in the dunk. <laughs> um, there's also going to be Ferndale Education Foundation operating a parking lot on Nine Mile, and the proceeds will, of course, go to Ferndale's um, Educational Foundation. We continue to do our work on the strategic plan. So, as you know, the um, Project Innovations team had come in and they facilitated a group of s a bunch of small meetings, focus groups, then they went to the larger town halls, and they presented us with a proposal what we have now done is we felt that we couldn't learn enough from the first time we went through our strategic planning, and that was that the more we listen to our community, the more we make sure that this is the community's plan, the better and stronger it will be. So it's going through its final um, revision process. We have a team of stakeholders that are gathering on Saturdays to work and fine tune this piece that we will be using for the next probably five years or so. So if anybody is interested, it's Riveting conversation Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. That is available to anybody who wants to come and join us. And as always, you are welcome to join us at the next school board meeting, which will be on Monday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. I still have a yes. question. The, um, a, a third grade student actually was asking me about when the program for the Bring your own Bring device. Your own devices. Okay, so um, we'll be up and running. We are currently in a transition phase for that. I know that in the district where I teach, we just finished the writing of it, so we're just fine tuning the legal policies okay, on it. I think that it's clear that the district is moving in that direction, and teachers are in some cases already allowing these devices into the classroom. So the policy should be rolled out sometime this year, I would think. Thanks. Thank you. Any other governmental reports? Liaison reports. Commissioner Perry. 
Yes. The, thank you, Karen, for doing the school liaison report. I went to the last. Um, That's not a keeper creep. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> I did go to the um, what's it called the uh, strategic planning committee meeting, and they really were having great uh, great discussions and. Um, there is really good representation also from our city there. Um, the on to the the transit and the complete streets. There is I went on the bus tour where we were investigating different um, potential places for stops as well as different um, potential routes. And you know, the, the, and this is for the BRT for the bus rapid transit. And the R is one of the keys with this uh, with this project. And what was really interesting was. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, so they were able to really investigate where the best locations for stops were, you know, when they really look at the, um, the density of people who will get on the bus or, you know, who will take this transit and, you know, um, all the different solutions. So it was a, it was a very valuable, very long day. Um, and then tomorrow, let's see. Yes, I'm sorry, Thursday, September 12th, for any business owners. They are having, um, Ferndale is holding for Woodward business owners um, a, a, a Woodward Rapid Transit business discussion so that you can see how it will benefit you as a business. So it will be at Dino's Lounge on, uh, in Ferndale on Thursday morning at 8.30 a.m. And that way you can really find out from all of the you know the important uh, you know stakeholders as well as all of the different analysts some of the information that could impact your business yeah. and are they talking about um, routes going east and west of Woodward at the same time or are they just talking about the north south route what they're really talking about is the north south because they realize to make it rapid they want to keep the spine strong but they are absolutely investigating the alternative of um, you know, like Royal Oak very much wants it to go up Washington and go into their transit station and then over 11. Or, you know, Berkeley, Berkeley isn't pushing as hard to have, you know, a 12 thing because they understand that circulators will probably be the better solution so that this can be a truly rapid solution for people to get all the way up and down Woodward. So, it should be good, thank you. But they are looking at, I mean, they're definitely investigating what those uh, where the important points are to have circulators like that. Are you out of committees? Can I move on? I'm in. That's Commissioner Bushy. I was out of town for the planning commission meeting, um, so if the city manager could fill us in, I would appreciate it. I was. At the uh, last planning commission meeting, there was actually a subcommittee meeting on the for the update of the master plan. And the Planning Commission, in fact, will be reviewing that. The full board of the Planning Commission will be reviewing that this Thursday at the Community Center at, um, I believe it's at 7 o'clock. Uh, reviewing the questionnaire. 6 o'clock. Reviewing the questionnaire. Uh, soon to be mailed out to residents. Um, think of any other order of business. There was some discussion. Uh, one particular planning commissioner had about uh, the I-696 that was discussed other than that. That's about it. They are focused right now on updating the master plan. Thank you. Thank commissioner Kriziak, Rec Commission. Um, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all the coaches and families who participated this year in um, the Little League and T-Ball teams in Pleasant Ridge. It was a lot of fun. I know uh, both my sons played and it was a great experience. Um, also, a great season for the swim team. I wish Scott was here to give us the final stats on that. I don't know what they finished, um, but I know that wrapped up and uh, that was always, that's always a lot of fun. Um, and good luck to our soccer teams who, are, who took the field this past weekend and we actually have some teams in action tonight. Um, my son being on one of them. Um, good luck, Henry. Um, we ha we the Pleasant Ridge Recreation Commission hosted a box castle event on August 27th, um, which was a lot of fun. Um, I want to thank uh, all the members of the Recreation Commission who helped out with that, especially uh, Sue Turpak and Jacqueline and Dan Scully. As always, they were uh, really helpful in making that a very very memorable event. 
I know um, Jay Foreman and his family were there. Ryan and uh, his family were there, and I think it was uh, it was a pretty fun, pretty fun day for everybody. And um, it was a lot of fun constructing the castle. The kids really got into it. The mayor, I was I was a little uh, taken aback at how eager the kids were to destroy the castle. They really, uh, they really took shocking. They really took to it with some gusto, and we had that thing broken down in under five minutes. It was it was like little piranhas. It was, it was pretty crazy. But that concluded a summer of events that the Recreation Commission put on. Um, as always, we have a full uh, schedule. Um, bike parade, the family reunion event in Gainesboro, and the Box Castle event. We look forward to having those, uh, turning those into yearly events. As far as our actual Recreation Commission meeting, China Goangeli was present to um, work on goals and objectives and um, provide some direction as the Recreation Commission um, discussed the Recreation Master Plan. And uh, I feel it was uh, a very productive evening. People, uh, the entire commission participated with their ideas and goals. We had uh, a good turnout from the public who also contributed to the conversation. And I'd like to remind everyone that uh, we'll continue that discussion at the September 25th Recreation Commission meeting. Um, and that's on September 25th. I think those are at 7 o'clock. Is that right, Sherry? That's correct. Okay. And uh, that's all I have in there. Thank, Thank you. you. Historic Commission, Commissioner Rubino. Well, we have a few things that are coming up. Um, the antique sale is going to be October 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Rec Center. Uh, we've had, I think, um, 13 to 14 vendors sign up already, and which is much, much greater than we had last year. Uh, I expect it to be much larger, and it should be a lot of fun. Uh, the other item is that uh, we're talking again about having the photo with Santa like we did last Christmas at the tree lighting. It was something different the Historical Commission wanted to do. Uh, it was extremely successful. Uh, there was quite a few pictures taken with Santa, and each <clears throat> each person who had the picture with their children was given a picture, one picture free, and that worked out really well. The other item that we're uh, talking about, Historical Commission is talking about having the speaker series in January. Uh, exactly what's going to happen with that, I don't know, but when I come back at the October meeting, we should have it finalized and have an idea of what, what is going to happen. Other than that, Mr. Mayor, that's it. Thank you. Next item is public discussion items not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Rob Sackett and Fairwood, I have three questions today. The first one is, is there an update on the Kimberton Sidewalk Project? Since our last meeting, I was walking my Willie down Kemberton, and once again, I really was going potty on the lawn. I was in the street, and the car came zooming down, and I got out of the street pretty quick. Sure, you want to ha handle item 13 early? Oh, I'm I sorry. To. Oh. <laughs> um, Bad question. The uh, project, the Cambridge Boulevard project, had three individual projects in it. One was the Camberton sidewalk, one was the alley, and one was Cambridge uh, west of Bridge Road. That project started on Monday. Now when someone stands up for public discussion items not on the agenda, that does not free up his chair. Oh. <laughs> oh. You can have it. You can have it. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was looking out for you, Ron. Oh. So construction started on Monday in the alley. Yeah. It moved much quicker My house than we anticipated. <laughs> um, they are doing full width in the alley, and I was delighted to learn that they have ordered the pour for Thursday of this week. That being said means that the project on Kenberton will begin on Monday. Oh. Um, if it moves as quickly as the alley and I'm hoping that the weather holds out, that project okay. will be done very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't imagine it would last more than a week or ten days. No, that's good. I didn't know if it was like scrapped or if it was still on the oh, no. table. So. Absolutely not. Yeah, it was right after the last meeting. I, I moved pretty quick. <laughs> um, I was wondering, um, following up from a previous meeting, you were talking about the, we, the whole big water bill stuff, the, the Coons drain and the Headley um, that's going on the ballot. Is there 
since we're getting pretty close to the election, is there going to be a public anything explaining what this is about or the dates? What do you do? Put them there as a shell? The dates for those are what? Nineteen. Oh, what? I said, oh, am I taking it again? Oh. You're shortening 13. Uh, the See, 19th, we're getting out here early. The first informational meeting will be held next week, Thursday, on September 19th okay. at 7 o'clock at the Community Center. And that's about the one in the... the that's about the millage. Okay. Okay. Not millage all the millage. General. Okay. And as part of the millage, there is a, a part of that millage that is about the water bill. So the second one is scheduled for October, October 10th. 10th. Oh, yeah. too. Yeah. Are you sure that that was the ninth? No. Is it well, sure the 10th of Thursday? Yes. Okay. It was so the are they both the same content just for people who can't make one go to the other? or? I, I expect that there will be some questions at the first ones that will need to be addressed at the next one okay. so it will be a review certainly but there may be additional information there's also printed material that should be coming out next week okay. and um, we anticipate answering any and all questions that are received question number three which I really <laughs> I really hate to ask this one. I really do <laughs> what's the process for replacing <laughs> <laughs> Farm manager well, the replacing you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? What <laughs> the, uh, the you know the process will likely start in earnest with the next commission. I okay. don't think it's appropriate that uh, uh, you know, this commission rush to anything with the election coming up and the number of incumbents not running and the number of candidates running. Number one, number two. Um, I would hope that some interim uh, solution be reached so that the uh, the new commission can concentrate on organizing itself and, and figuring out you know where it's going uh, without rushing into interviews for a, a permanent solution. Um, three items that um, potentially are out there for interim solutions. One would be to appoint Scott as interim city manager. That's how. Sherry started as a city manager and mm -hmm. she served as interim for about six months and then we took the I word off of her title. Um, second, a, you know, maybe um, uh, something that Sherry herself has to decide if she's even interested is to what degree she can serve on a part-time contract basis um, uh, during an interim mm -hmm. period of time. Uh, there are some contractual and other issues that would have to be handled with respect to that. And then thirdly, the, um, the MML has quite an established track record of assisting cities in uh, both the recruiting and the selection process. Uh, and in... Excuse me, I'm sorry. Okay. And in um, also providing interims uh, during any uh, you know, period of time. It's no secret that uh, Scott was in the finals uh, for the position in Port Huron, and the only reason that those interviews um, uh -oh. didn't take place was because the other two candidates found jobs sooner. I don't know what you're uh, there's a Port Huron. It's city in Michigan. Manager. I know. I, was, I, I live by there. I mean, I had and the city manager positions open. Oh. And Scott was in the finals for uh, for that position. He was recruited. He didn't apply. Uh -huh. um, but in getting to the finals, the council itself had not interviewed candidates. There was only a head on her who had interviewed candidates. And by the time they narrowed it down to the finals, the other two people had taken jobs. So they restarted the process. Okay. So that's where we stand. You know. I guess my question is, does... You had three. <laughs> <laughs> Part of my question was, since this was my first new manager, okay. uh, does the public have any way, say in this process, or is it all city council um, in selecting a new manager? In the, in the past, there have not been That's public hearings. There haven't been public interviews. Um, it's the, one of city. the most important roles of the city commission. Uh, the next city commission chooses to execute their franchise uh, remains yeah. to be seen in coming months. Yeah. That was it. And at 7.43 on November 12th, <laughs> I'll be handing this to somebody. I'll be hand to hand. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks.
Then you, Pat. No. Okay. I Pat's have, first, then you. I have a quick question. Um, Pat Church, 46 Oxford. The Kemberton project, approximately, how much is that going to cost the city? I'm just curious. Sure. And the numbers. And you have, and you have a precise tips. number. Um, well, I guess I'll give you the approximate number. <laughs> <laughs> it's about $22,000. Okay. Thank you. Keith. <clears throat> My name is Keith Cunningham, 9 Cambridge, and I'm here to report on the foundation. Um, I just wanted to update you that we had a special event in July at the Park Shelton. Um, that we had approximately 80 people show up and we raised over $5,000. That is going to be uh, earmarked for uh, parks. You know, for, for, uh, the, for those who don't know, the, uh, the foundation has made a commitment to basically taking the money that we currently have and the money that we're going to raise for the next probably two years and earmark that for uh, redoing of Gainesboro Park. And finally, uh, on October 26, we are going to resurrect our Oktoberfest. Huh? Uh, that is going to be Oktoberfest meets Halloween. So uh, people can come in costumes or not, uh, drink beer for sure. And uh, again, any money that we raise will be going to the parks project. I have one question. You say, is, now, is all that money going straight to the Gainesboro Park, or is this just a parks budget for the whole community? Well, at this point, uh, the plan is primarily to use it for Gainesboro as long as the city agrees and we move forward on, uh, on that project. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Tiger, 14 Oakdale. Okay. I'm going to read this so I make sure I get everything I want to say. My concern this evening is the impact of social media on city politics. I read PR on PR and read Commissioner Perry's post about rumors about her political views. One of the responses of the remarks were from Mr. Foreman, who is a co administrator with Mrs. Commissioner Perry of the, web, of the face page. Why I responded to Mr. Foreman's remarks on September 5th. In his response, he worked very hard to trash the reputation of PR commissioners, past and present, who were part of the negotiation team for the fire contract. He wrote that they adopted a Machiavellian mindset. It was the ends justify the means. <coughs> they tarnished the city's reputation by, because of their <coughs> actions were a dirty way to conduct negotiations. They were, and these are quotes, by the way, disrespectful and misleading to our neighbors in Berkeley and Ferndale. They were misleading to the press. They did the same to PR residents. They set PR up for a $52,000 penalty and only got out of it by some under the table maneuvers that got Berkeley reward the police dispatch contract. There was however no mention that the contract was a renewal and that it was a favorable one for the city that guaranteed no cost increase for the life of the contract of five years. Mr. Foreman never mentioned in his response a motive for all this negative behavior on the part of the commissioners, so we're left to wonder. I thought about what he was saying, and I got angry. He was talking about men and a woman that I've known for a lot of years, men and a woman who have been given freely of their time and talents to PR, to make PR the great place we enjoy today. Men and women, men and a woman, I respect and believe, have both personal integrity and honesty. The same people who started the fire contract talks with Ferndale, offering a pretty much take it or leave it contract at a price tag of $450,000 per year. The previous contract had been $280,000, with an escalation clause built into it so the contract could increase. A six month cancellation policy on their part, a two year cancellation policy for us. This is not the best place to start negotiations, plus, Ferndale was not initially interested in talking about the contract, let alone actually negotiating, the city could not afford this hefty price tag to prevent PR from being this protection. No, I lost a page, sorry about that.
Oh. I apologize. They took a six month temporary contract, fire contract only, with Berkeley in case the current contract with Ferndale expired without a settlement. That's some history, but that's not the main reason I'm speaking to you tonight. That runs deeper. I wrote a response to Mr. Foreman's remarks. It was loud and it was very negative. It lasted less than half an hour on the PR versus PR website, face page. Commissioner Perry wrote me on her reasons for deleting. She didn't say anything about Mr. Foreman's character attacks or why his inflammatory remarks were acceptable, and mine, of course, were not. She did write that she would include my next post, and I'm going to quote again, if it is appropriate debate for our city. She and Mr. Foreman get to decide what is appropriate, I'm assuming. This is as it should be, because PR on PR is their face page. This brings me back to my issue with PR on PR. When I finished reading Mr. Foreman's remarks, I couldn't understand why no one had responded to this attack and character assassination. Then the light dawned. The face page is Mr. Foreman's and Commissioner Perry's. They control the content. They control what's posted. In my opinion, PR on PR is a political tool to get Mr. Foreman elected to the City Commission in November and to maintain a positive view of Commissioner Perry in the community. Part of it may deal with lost pets and finding a good babysitter. But that's a facade, not the purpose. Mr. Foreman ended his remarks with the following. I want our city to pledge an image, to project an image composed of positive traits like acceptance, community, and integrity. For me, he has done the opposite. I am sick of the political strategies that create a we versus them, where the we are holding up the great American way and the them are out to do the we's in through some skullduller. We are too small a community for this. I have gone through nasty political situations in PR in the past, which included anonymous threatening phone calls to me on the views I was advocating. This was before social media made the spread of opinions as truce so much easier. This is why I'm speaking to you tonight, to warn about the negative impact it can have on political life in our city. Thank you. Thank you. Other items not on the agenda. Chief Foreman, 79 Maple Fields. Um, I'd like to start by making a correction to something that Commissioner Krizyak had stated. Uh, actually, the Rec Commission meeting has been rescheduled to October 2nd. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Scott here, I <laughs> mess up on the dates. Thanks. Uh, next one would be um, Mr. Tigert's uh, summary of my response. I'd like to just say there's a lot of quotation thrown in there, but really the whole context of what he read is not full quotation. So I'd be happy to read that verbatim. I have no problem with it. I'll stand behind what I said. Um, there was a whole mention of negotiation tactic, and I don't want to get into whether it wasn't, but um, what I said about it was, the problem I have always had with the whole negotiation tactic explanation is that basically it wants all of us to subscribe to a cutthroat way of thinking, cutthroat way of thinking, where the end justifies the means. If it were true, my personal feeling is that this was a dirty way to conduct ourselves. And this type of approach does not reflect well on our city. If this was a truly, truly a negotiation tactic, here are the problems that I see. One, disrespectful and misleading to our neighbors, Berkeley, Pawns, and Ferndale. Two, misleading to the press. Commissioner Rubino was quoted as supporting this move to public safety. Three, misleading to the residents, constituents of Pleasant Ridge. Four, subjected PR to $52,000 penalty to get out of the contract with no real assurance that we would later be able to get out of this fee. Five, to ultimately get out of the $52,000 penalty, PR had to agree to a five-year Berkeley dispatch contract. So again, even if our city commission really had no intention of leaving Ferndale and moving to a public safety model with Berkeley, there are at least five big problems with that tactic. This is not how I want us to operate. I want our city to project an image composed of positive traits like acceptance, community, and integrity. Fake contracts or contracts that we have no intention of honoring are not good business. Mr. Tigger's personal attack on me this morning referred to Nazis and extermination. I believe that's why Commissioner Perry deleted it. When um, a fellow resident mentioned maybe a possible conflict of interest of my administrative rights on that page, which I used to accept members when they join and never delete a post, I gladly relinquish those abilities and I no longer have administrative privileges. At some point in the future, 
whatever happens with the election, whatever, I may take those back. But uh, I'm, I'm confident in the way I've conducted myself. Not deleting posts, as may have been implied by Mr. Tigger. He has no it's facts tiger. to back. It's tiger. 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 Okay. My name was misspelled purposely, it seems, multiple times in his email, but I won't comment on that any further. Um, so, basically, I felt it was a little bit over the top. I didn't comment on it, but someone deleted it because it was very inappropriate, and many residents agreed. I didn't see any that said, I really liked what he said. But that's just opinion. So, to refer to Hitler or Nazis, basically, like, if you search on the internet, which I know is a bad thing to some people, basically it says you automatically lose the argument because that's the worst thing you could possibly say to somebody. It's extremely insulting and very desperate. And I was ashamed to see it. I was not attacking you. Please, Mr. Dave, Dave. Dave. Okay, I'll be quiet. Thank you Sorry, for your George. time. My apologies. George Lenko, 32 Oakland Park. I did not intend to address today, but listening to this, I have to. Uh, first of all, regarding the Facebook filtering, um, I was a victim of Facebook at the last election. Uh, some people would say that uh, uh, I was a source of misinformation. I'm prepared to post all the backup for everything that transpired back then. It was not disingenuous negotiations. It was fact-based and in the best interest of the city. We did not string Berkeley along. We did not play games with Ferndale. We sought the best deal for the city. But uh, that's, that's something I can leave for later, Thank Jay. You. Uh, what I would like to do, though, is talk about the double standard, though, because as much as uh, you know, maybe the comments were offensive. But you know, I'd like to think back to the comments that happened at the last election cycle, where um, the one that struck me deepest was not any of the misinformation comments, uh, but it was from a. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Jason Gideon, who made a libelous statement about our city clerk, who basically paraphrased the quote about Stalin, uh, who, whoever counts the vote controls the election. And um, I'll tell you why that was hurtful. Because my great-grandfather died in the Russian Revolution. Most of my relatives are still there. Two uncles in Siberia. And my parents went to great effort to come here for the democracy we have here. And for people to trivialize it, trivialize it, uh, for political gain, uh, just is astounding. So anyway, that comment was not pulled. Today's comment was pulled. You know, Stalin, Hitler, and uh, you know, who's worse? I don't know. I'm not going to contend this, but somehow some get pulled and some don't get pulled. So that's so that's something you really need to be mindful of as you manipulate the population of the city. Thank you. Other items not on the agenda. Right. Good evening. On a lighter note, <laughs> I would like to thank uh, Mayor Castelli personally and Commissioner Bushy for their time served in office. Um, I, for one, really appreciate it. Um, I also want to wish Commissioner Rubino, uh, Kurt Metzger, Brett Scott, and Jay Foreman good luck in the upcoming election. Um, I look forward to hearing what each one of you has to offer to the city. In 2005, I moved to Pleasant Ridge with my wife, Julia, and our son, Logan to establish a lifelong residence. Since moving to Pleasant Ridge, we have been blessed with a daughter, Morgan. Pleasant Ridge attracted us for its small, closely knit community, safety, and social and recreation programs. We have personally taken part in and enjoyed the events put on the Pleasant Ridge Foundation, the Pleasant Ridge Club, the DDA, and the Pleasant Ridge Recreation Department. Our children safely play outside with the neighbors, ride their bikes to the park, and our neighbors are always available to each other for carpooling or babysitting. I have decided to run for Pleasant Ridge Commissioner to give back to the community that has provided so much to my family. The background on me, for 13 years I've been an attorney primarily practicing law in the areas of contract and real estate. Since Pleasant Ridge contracts out virtually all city services, I believe a contract attorney is a, an invaluable asset to the city commission. If elected, I will be the only attorney on the city commission. In addition to being an attorney, I am the managing partner of a small business, the Law Office of, uh, of Sterling Trudex and Stern PLLC. I serve on the Pleasant Ridge Planning Commission and the Pleasant Ridge Downtown Development Authority, and I serve on the Board of Directors for the Jewish Community Center of Metropolitan Detroit. As a commissioner, I will use my knowledge and experience and work with the city commissioners and the residents 
keep Pleasant Ridge an independent and unique community which continues to provide the exceptional safety, community, community social, and recreational services to its residents. By working together, we can keep Pleasant Ridge a united community. And if you want more information about myself or my campaign, you can visit www.ryanstone.com. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other items not on the agenda. Next item is the consent agenda. Share it. There, there are three items on the consent agenda this evening for your consideration. The first two are proclamations declaring September as National Preparedness Month and Recognition of Citizenship Day and Constitution Week. The last item is an annual request by the First United Methodist Church to hold a portion of its crop walk within the boundaries of Pleasant Ridge. My recommendation is that the consent agenda be approved. Is there such a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move the consent agenda be approved as recommended. Is there support? I'll support it. Can we take a vote? Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Krizak? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes, motion carries. Next item is item 10, consideration of establishing a public hearing on Tuesday, October 8, 2013, at 7.30 p.m. to solicit public comments on a proposed amendment to Chapter 42, miscellaneous provisions, Article 4, offenses against public peace, Section 42-86, ignition, discharge, and use of consumer fireworks, and Section 42-87, violations, fines, and penalties. Share it. You have in your packet this evening um, a draft of an ordinance that will be presented at the public hearing next month. That is the first step in adopting an ordinance, in the process of adopting an ordinance. No sooner did the City Commission adopt an ordinance till the law changed. And um, I think it, it changed as a result of some of the pressure from municipalities and police departments. Basically, it gives a little more authority as to when a municipality may restrict uh, fireworks. And so those additional restrictions would be? And those additional restrictions basically would be that um, between the hours of 12 midnight 8 a.m. on days when their use is not already prohibited, between the hours of 1 a.m. and 8 a.m. on New Year's Day. So as I said, the first step in being able to adopt an ordinance is to establish a public hearing and my recommendation is that that be established for next month. Is there such a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that a public hearing to solicit public comments on our proposed amendment to Chapter 42, Miscellaneous Provisions, Article 4, Offenses Against Public Peace, Section 4286, Ignition, Discharge, and Use of Consumer Fireworks, and Section 42-8, Violations, Fines, and Penalties be established for Tuesday, October 8th, 2013 at 7.30 p.m. as recommended. Is there support? Support. I take a vote. Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Krizak? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is to consider establishing another public hearing for that same date to solicit public comments on the proposed Oakland County Community Development Block Grant Program year 2014. Community application and subrecipient agreement only the second to the last time I ever had to say that. <laughs> Sherry. Um, and part of the process of accepting the federal funds through the Community Development Block Grant Program is the requirement of a public hearing, and therefore my recommendation is that that be held next month. The city, all of cities, there was a drastic cut to the funding level at the federal level in Pleasant Ridge that we used to receive the minimum level of $8,000 per year that has been reduced now to $5,000 per year. Nonetheless, we were able to, as difficult as it is, we were able to find a category where we could actually um, spend $5,000 and therefore we will be accepting it. And uh, basically the category is called public services it's for senior services. It allows us to provide some services at the community center for seniors, helps to offset some of the costs for the 50 plus club dinners, and the, some of that is also applied to the administration of the program that is administered by the city clerk. Is there a motion to establish a public hearing? 
Mayor, I move that a public hearing to solicit public comments on the 2014 Community Development Block Grant CDBG community application and sub recipient agreement be established for Tuesday, October 8th, 2013 at 7.30 p.m. as recommended. Is there support? Support. we we'll take a vote. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Fizia? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes, motion carries. Commissioner Perry, never make that motion because then you have to read that whole <laughs> Is it a top? Yeah. <laughs> Next item is consideration of the appointment of Officer Glenn Fern as the city's employee delegate to the Municipal Employees Retirement System, known as MERS, annual meeting to be held October 1st through October 3rd, 2013. Sure. Mayor and City Commission, this item is an annual item on the agenda of our retirement system for the employees requires that the governing body adopt a resolution that uh, empowers them to vote at the annual conference. This year, one of our police officers volunteered and asked if he could be um, the one to attend the conference. It is a very valuable conference for the employees. They are obligated to attend certain classes and come back and report um, some of the changes and uh, additions or deletions that have affected our retirement. Therefore, Officer Fern, um, my recommendation is that Officer Fern be appointed as the city's employee delegate to the Michigan Municipal Employee Retirement System Annual Conference. Is there such a motion? Mayor, I move that the appointment of Officer Glenn Fern as the city's employee delegate to the Michigan Employees Retirement MERS Annual Meeting be approved as recommended. Is there support? Support. May I take a vote? Commissioner Perry? Yes. Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Krizak? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes, motion carries. Uh, next item is item 12A, the add-on item. Consideration of the request by Officer, Officer Jason Nagy to purchase additional service credit from the Municipal Employees Retirement System, known as MERS. Sherry? Mayor and City Commission, you've looked at this item a few times in the last, over the past year by uh, several employees. The, our municipal retirement system allows an employee to purchase additional time, and in doing so, that would allow them then to retire earlier. It doesn't mean that they would receive benefits earlier. There's criteria, age criteria that has to be met. This would be the second time that Officer Nagy is able to purchase additional service credit, and he has asked, as required, MERS requires the governing body to approve it. Any and all costs are covered by the employee, um, and Officer Nagy approached me yesterday. He received his paperwork, and that's why it has been an addition to the agenda, and asked that the city approve this, and my recommendation is that the city approve. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that the request of Officer Jason Nagy to purchase additional service credit from the Michigan oh. Employees Retirement System MERS be approved conditioned upon Mr. Nagy incurring the entire cost of the purchase as recommended. Is there support? Support. How many years is he buying this time, Sure. I think he's buying three more years. Sounds like a big check. It's quite big the investment, check. yes. Quite an investment. Uh, may we take a vote? Commissioner Rubino? Yes. Commissioner Bushy? Yes. Commissioner Krizia? Yes. Commissioner Perry? Yes. Mayor Castelli? Yes, motion carries. Well, Sherry, thanks to Mr. Sackett. <laughs> <laughs> you have a short city manager's report. I know. He had to see a copy of this. <laughs> That's all I know. He missed yeah. Meet the Candidates night. Right. I, know, I left that for you. The alley reconstruction, Camberton sidewalk, um, and the third thing I have down is Meet the Candidates, which will be held October third at the community center at 7 p.m. that is hosted by and sponsored by the League of Women Voters. Um, we're hoping for a good turnout. There will only be one event. And then uh, the now, other one event is normal, but they had one, there some talk of two. But there was some talk of two. But the the league actually called us and um, I think uh, the the other date that we had booked another community needed it and obviously that took priority. And then the um, Millage Public Informational Meeting, I talked about that, it's a week from Thursday on September 19th at 7 o'clock at the Community Center. That's all I have, Mayor. Questions? 
Um, is there a coffee schedule? Oh, I'm sorry. September 26th, also a Thursday, the uh, quarterly City Commission Coffee House will be held at the Community Center at 7 p.m. I think we have tied up all the Thursdays yes. at the Community yeah, Center. Pretty much, yeah. Other business? To my left. Thank you, Mayor. Um, if I could, I'd just like to invite everybody to the next um, book discussion that we're going to have. Um, the book that a uh, neighbor of ours had su suggested was The Abundant Community. Um, I think it is really relevant to what um, we have all experienced in this community as far as uh, the power of uh, uh, neighborliness and um, it, it, it really touches on some themes that I think are really appropriate. I really look forward to the discussion. I think it uh, will, um, like I said, it's very relevant to this community. We'll be doing this um, at 7 o'clock on Tuesday, September 24th at um, 7 o'clock at Gainesboro. So we want, uh, we'd love everyone to, to uh, participate, even if you don't necessarily read the book or finish the book, um, the discussion should be, um, should re should be really, um, really interesting and lively. And um, I'm inferring then that somebody showed up last time. Yes, it was. <laughs> we've had some uh, two in a row. Yes, where people actually showed up. I know I had one where I had two in a row where nobody showed up, and it was kind of a very kind of like discussion in my mind type experience. But um, people have been coming by, and it really, it just really, um, like I said, if you don't read the book, it's just an opportunity to discuss the themes, and people can share their experiences with the themes in the book and um, it kind of leads, I just wanted to touch on, on one thing in addition to announcing the book club. I know um, we are entering election season and as we, we witnessed this evening, you know, it, it can get um, heated. You know, we all have memories of um, two years ago and I just wanted to share a story that I, I try and keep in mind. It, Whenever I'm discussing politics, it's, it was an occasion in my mother's kitchen where my brother and I, who honestly don't, we don't see politically things the same way. And for many years we had been, um, you know, um, exchanging jibes at each other and, and it, it got to a head one time in my mom's kitchen where we had actually raised our voice to the points where my mom just came in and she said, enough boys. Um, your brothers, you love each other, politics, it doesn't matter. What matters is your relationship to each other. And I feel that there's a mom's wisdom has some relevance here is that, um, like Commissioner Lenko said, um, there's, there's countries in this world where we can't have different opinions. Um, and people are persecuted for having different opinions. We're all entitled to our different opinions and that's what makes this country the incredible place that it is. Um, but just like I, my mom had to remind me that um, my brother, even though he saw politics a little bit differently than I did, was still my brother. And I think it's, it's we should remember that we're all entitled to have our different opinions. And that's, like I said, um, our community should um, be able to support a, a, a wide variety of opinions. There's nothing wrong with that. But we also have to remember, just like, I, my brother and I is that we're still neighbors at the end of the day and that um, that should take precedence over any um, disagreements we can have. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Uh, any other other business? Maybe so I did forget something. Um, the Woodward Avenue Action Association right now is working I very... I you were short of mm -hmm. I know. They, um, <laughs> they are working hard to, to help save the Highland Park Ford Model T building. It's where the first moving assembly line happened, and it's where the um, uh, the five dollars a day was started, which really helped kick off the middle class as well as you know establish the forty hour a week work week. And it really is it's a wonderful building by Albert Kahn. Still has wonderful Plavik pottery tiles around the top, and it really I think could make a, a difference um, if we save that for the city of Highland Park. I think the mission is to do a um, historical um, automotive heritage type center on the first floor and really try and recreate some of the, the what Henry Ford did there and then after that to to create other spaces for people to lease 
and really make this an economic development center for the area and really help try and redevelop some of those wonderful buildings that are still standing. There's still over two million square feet of, of building there in Highland Park that was part of the Ford plant. And so by saving this one, all you have to do is go to woodwardavenue.org and you can um, click on this picture of the building and you can help donate to a crowdsourcing fund. That This is just such a wonderful building and I think it could make a really big difference. It would be a terrible thing to be lost to history. So thank you. And I have you postcards. Left out the match. And oh yes, we have over, it has over $400,000 in match from the state. Um, we only have to raise $125,000 to be able to buy the building. And the $400,000 from the state is, um, you know, will help make, keep this building secure. Deadline. And the deadline is, it, they have, um, yeah, quick. The, yes, we've slightly changed it. It is going to be September 30th. So as soon as you can, and I'll make sure to post this, and, um, but all you have to do is go to woodwardavenue.org and you can get, you can click right on it. Thank you, and I have postcards. Any other other business? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. There's support. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned.